JFK's affairs, including a rumored tryst with Marilyn Monroe, are legendary, and it turns out his father was also a ladies' man who gallivanted with Hollywood glamazons. Joe Kennedy's relationship with his wife Rose was fairly chaste. According to her close friend Marie Green, Rose Kennedy, a devout Catholic, believed that sex should be reserved for the purpose of procreation. According to Hollywood legend Gloria Swanson's memoir, she and Joe Kennedy met in 1927 at the Savoy Plaza Hotel in New York City. A mutual friend had put them in touch because Swanson needed financial advice that Kennedy, a banker, could provide. She was already a major star, but her extravagant lifestyle had left her in debt. Gloria Swanson was a much more modern woman with a different moral code. When Joe Kennedy's affair with Swanson began, his pregnant wife was in Massachusetts expecting their eighth child. The birth of their ninth and last child, Ted, was the end of the Kennedy's sex life. Didn't you feel guilty? This married man guilty? eight children? Guilty? I went through absolute hell. Of course I was guilty. Rose Kennedy probably knew about her husband's affair with Swanson. Whenever she was asked, however, she claimed Joe was simply helping Swanson with her finances. Rose seemed to feel sorry for Swanson. If she was jealous or angry, she didn't show it publicly. After all, she had the advantage of being Kennedy's wife and all the prestige and wealth that came along with that. But Rose's parents weren't as resigned to the affair. A niece reported hearing Rose's father threaten Joe Kennedy that he would expose his infidelity. Kennedy replied that if he told Rose the truth, he'd simply marry Swanson instead. When you say he was obsessed, he was uh, obsessed with me, why? Rose's mother told her about the affair, but Rose chose to look the other way. Gloria Swanson's last of six husbands described her as Joe Kennedy's ultimate trophy mistress. Well, we had some scandals. She wrote that Kennedy had taken over her entire life. He rearranged her finances and the ownership of her recent films. Still, somehow, by the end of the affair, Swanson was more in debt than before. That's because she hadn't received all she was owed from her popular film Sadie Thompson. Oh, and also, Kennedy had charged many of the expenses of the film Queen Kelly to her accounts. Kennedy and Swanson collaborated on Queen Kelly, and it was a disaster. Kennedy hired Eric von Stroheim to direct. Von Stroheim was notorious for production delays and other complications. All the stupid, bungling idiots I've ever seen in my life, she is the worst. Queen Kelly was no exception. The script changed repeatedly, and production was enormously expensive. Eventually, Kennedy needed to replace his director, but couldn't find a new one. When the film finally came out, it was a box office flop. That was it for Joe Kennedy. He left Hollywood in 1931 and appeared to be done with filmmaking, and with Swanson, the affair was over. Seven years later, the 49-year-old Kennedy was the U.S. ambassador to England. He and his family were summering in Cannes on the French Riviera. They rented a villa near the swanky Hotel de Camp, where the rich and famous stayed. It was there that Joe Kennedy met film star Marlena Dietrich, or rather, as Dietrich later recalled, Kennedy started following her around. Dietrich was married to Rudolf Sieber, and they had a daughter. But it was an open marriage. They were both free to take other lovers, and did. When Dietrich met Kennedy, she was already involved with All Quiet on the Western Front writer Eric Maria Remark. But she was in a career slump, and Kennedy offered to tap into a sizable network of Hollywood cronies on her behalf. The plan was to help her negotiate a role in a Western that would revive her career. Kennedy and Dietrich had similar personalities. They loved to talk politics together, except when it came to his isolationist attitude toward Nazi Germany. He believed that he could make a deal with Hitler, and that Hitler was a rational politician and statesman. His stance was unpopular in general and eventually cost him his post. But in the summer of 1939, just before World War II began, Kennedy helped Dietrich's family get out of Europe. Dietrich herself returned to Hollywood to work on the Western Destry rides again. While their parents were sneaking around con together, the Kennedy children made friends with Dietrich's teenage daughter, Maria Sieber. She was especially close to Rosemary, the Kennedy's intellectually delayed oldest daughter. Sieber said they bonded because, quote, we were both shadow children. Sieber noticed her mother's closeness with Joe Kennedy and worried that it would affect her friendships, but the Kennedys, including Rose, continued to treat her well. Sieber had a bit of a crush on future U.S. President John F. Kennedy. She recalled how gallantly he asked her to dance at a ball in con. She was wearing her first ever evening dress, which she described as looking like a mosquito tent. In an interview with Vanity Fair, she recalled that night and the handsome young JFK saying, A breathtaking dream who, at the age of just 21, has the kindness to ask a net tent to dance. You must admit, it's truly wonderful. That ball was also, in a sense, the night JFK's own affair with Dietrich began. George Jacobs, Frank Sinatra's valet, described in his memoir what JFK told him about that night, that he'd been dancing with Dietrich when she felt him up. You dance quite well. Huh? 
The two reconnected years later when JFK was president. Dietrich was performing in Washington, D.C., and JFK invited her to the White House. Kenneth Tynan and Gore Vidal, both friends of Dietrich's, recalled her description of that evening. She told them how she and JFK ended up alone together and he'd made a clumsy pass at her. She pointed out to the president that she was over 60. Apparently, he didn't care. They had an ecstatic three to six minutes together, after which JFK fell asleep. Dietrich had to wake him up to help her find her way out of the White House. Before she left, JFK asked her if she'd ever slept with his father. She said no. That was what JFK wanted to hear. Whether it was the truth remains a mystery.